Welcome. I am Collins Trott, Child Development Faculty on the Wallace Community College Dothan campus. In this episode, we are going to be learning about the teacher's role. This episode describes the teacher's role in observing a child's development. As a teacher in a self-directed learning environment, your role is different from that of a teacher in a traditional classroom. So join me, Ms. Trott, as we learn all about the teacher's role. In the self-directed learning environment, it is necessary to consider two of the most important tasks that a teacher in a self-directed learning environment must perform. That of providing appropriate curriculum materials and activities based on curriculum goals and the children's developmental levels and that of supporting the children in their use of these materials. The learning environment is in place. The children have chosen activities to pursue. Everyone is busily engaged. Now, what does the teacher do? The teacher or teaching team in such a classroom has six distinct tasks to perform. Teachers must observe and listen to children in learning centers, record observations, respond to individuals as they work and play, ask questions about their work when appropriate, give suggestions to children when appropriate, and work with specific individuals when necessary. Another important task for teachers in a self-directed learning environment is to serve as a behavior model for the children. For example, teachers need to be sure that their actions, words, and emotions represent the behaviors they would like the children to emulate. Teachers can serve as behavior models for the children by being a facilitator of learning, discovering answers, and modeling caring. We recognize that young children grow and develop physically in a well-defined chronological sequence as they mature from year to year. We also realize that children simultaneously progress through certain, through certain stages of psychological, intellectual, social, language, and creative development. Growth within these ages and stages of development is not always even. Some children progress more rapidly than others, whereas others exhibit developmental lags. To provide appropriate materials and activities to promote the growth and learning of all of the children in our classrooms, it is necessary to assess the developmental level of each child. A great deal has been written about the developmental levels of children. Researchers have examined children's physical, cognitive, social, emotional, language, and creative development, among other things. They have come up with gross motor rating scales, self-concept measures, personality projective techniques, perceptual motor surveys, language inventories, learning profiles, observational checklists, and numerous other devices for assessing the level of young children's development. Many of these techniques are credible. Some are excellent, especially when used for their intended purposes by trained people. But few of them address the practical needs of the classroom teacher or the college student preparing to become a teacher. Early childhood classroom personnel need to use appropriate tools to determine each child's developmental level in order to provide materials and activities that are suitable for the individual child. To be appropriate, such materials and activities should appeal to the child's current interests and ability levels and stimulate the child. There's a method available based on the research of Piaget and Vygotsky. It focuses on young children's spontaneous exploratory interactions with materials and activities in the early childhood classroom, in other words, on their play. The 3M method for observing children's interactions with material is easy to apply observational scheme that will help determine a child's developmental level in the activity area where the child is working or playing. Children from birth to about age seven progress through three distinct stages of play interaction with the objects and activities they encounter in their environment. The 3M model uses stages of interaction by breaking it down into three words used in observing children in the preschool classroom, manipulation, mastery, and meaning. Manipulation is how a child plays around with an object. Mastery is how a child uses objects correctly over and over. Meaning is how a child puts meaning on an object. Manipulation is the first of the interaction stages. It's concerned with the children's beginning explorations with unfamiliar objects or activities. B. 
Because the children do not know how things work, they will try them out in a variety of ways until they learn what they do and how to do it. Young children and even infants begin by manipulating objects in a sensory motor fashion. Once children begin to control the medium they are working with, they spontaneously progress to the mastery stage and seldom return to manipulation. Mastery is often called practice play by cognitive psychologists, and it refers to the tendency of children to repeat an action again and again and again, almost as if they are practicing or putting themselves through a drill. The more advanced stage of children's interactions with materials occurs when the children have finally gotten control of the medium through manipulation and have satisfied their inner impulse to practice through mastery. Now, if their cognitive development is advanced enough, they are ready to add their own meaning to the activity. It is fascinating to observe how children accomplish this. More often than not, children in completely different programs who are in the meaning stage of interaction will spontaneously use the same materials in the same way. By simply observing children at work or play in one of your activity areas, you should be able to identify which of the three interaction stages they are using, manipulation, mastery, or meaning. This then will tell you what developmental level they have reached. Now, let's review what we've learned. A teacher in a self-directed learning environment must perform that of providing appropriate curriculum materials and activities based on curriculum goals and the children's developmental levels, and that of supporting the children in their use of these materials. To provide appropriate materials and activities to promote the growth and learning of all of the children in your classroom, it is necessary to assess the developmental level of each child. To determine children's developmental levels, teachers will look for children's spontaneous exploratory interactions with materials and activities, Use the 3M method for observing the interactions of manipulation, mastery, and meaning. And watch children at work or play and identify which of the three interaction stages they are using. That wraps us up for this episode. You can learn more about this topic by reviewing the resources posted in your course. As always, if you have any questions, please contact me or your instructor. Thanks for joining me, Ms. Trot, as we learn all about the teacher's role. See you next time.